Good morning, everybody. Um, so today we're going to talk about the scientific process. And you may have um, gone over this when you were in fifth grade. In fact, I'm confident you did because I taught fifth grade for seven years before I went to sixth grade science. So I'm going to approach today with the um, understanding that you know a lot of this already, and this is really just a review. As you know, the scientific process is um, going about deciding what you want to know more about, how you're going to conduct an investigation on that, the steps you're going to follow during the investigation and what you're hoping to know after doing the investigation. So the first step of any scientific investigation is to generate a testable question. Now there's lots and lots of things we want to know, but not everything can reasonably be tested and explored. So a testable question is something that can be reasonably explored. Let me give you an example. If I wanted to know what it would feel like to stand on the sun, well, that's a good question, but I can't survive the experience. So it's not reasonable to explore that question. However, if I wanna know how long it takes to use a magnifying glass to catch a blade of grass on fire, that's something I could reasonably test. I don't recommend you do it though. You need to make sure that your testable question uh, involves an experiment where tools are readily available. Again, trying to determine the temperature of the sun in person would not be feasible because we don't have tools that won't melt when they get close enough to the sun to test its temperature. However, we could easily use a thermometer to test um, the temperature of water as we heat it up or cool it down with ice. So we want to use tools that are readily available. We want to make sure we can conduct the investigation in a safe manner. For example, not all chemicals should be combined because it causes a dangerous side effect. So although that might be interesting to do, it's not necessarily safe to do. A safe experiment would be combining baking soda and vinegar to see what the reaction is. We want to make sure that we're doing an investigation that generates data that can be measured accurately. Your investigation is only beneficial to you if you have data, and if you can't measure anything to gather that data, then it's not really a question that we could reasonably create an investigation on. The next thing you want to do is establish your procedure. Before you ever start doing anything, you need to know the following things. What am I trying to find out in doing this? Why am I doing this? How am I going to set my experiment up? What do I need to gather as first tools? What should I do first? What should I do second? What should I do third? What should I do last? How am I going to gather my data? Am I going to draw a bar graph, a line graph? Am I going to write down temperatures? Am I going to measure the temperature every 30 seconds or every minute or every two minutes? Um, am I going to be in charge of doing all of the observing or am I going to put somebody else in charge of writing down observations while I conduct the experiment? And then the next really big thing you need to understand is what are the variables in your investigation? Every investigation has controls, constants, an independent variable, and a dependent variable. You have to know what each of these are in your investigation before you can conduct the investigation, gather data and observations from the investigation, and translate that all into a scientific finding about the investigation you did. Your control is everything before you changed anything. If you wanted to explore if adding a certain type of fertilizer to a plant would allow it to grow faster, then the plant as it is before you change anything is your control. The soil as it is is your control. The constants, these are all the things in the experiment that you are not going to change. If you're just wanting to know if a particular fertilizer will make a plant grow faster, everything else stays the same. The soil you use, the plant you use, the amount of sunlight it gets, how long you observe after adding fertilizer. Now, the independent variable and the dependent variable sometimes are hard to remember. I want you to think about the independent variable as the thing that you change. Going back to my example, if I want to know if a particular fertilizer makes a plant grow faster, that's my independent variable. The dependent variable is the variable that will change depending on what you do to the independent variable. The plant in this situation is the dependent variable because whether it grows faster or slower or not at all depends on what you do with the fertilizer, which is the independent variable.